We ready? All right. Welcome, everybody. It is the Kwanzaa edition of On One with Angela Rye. Hey, welcome, welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cheer. Byron is over here like Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man, but you will hear from Byron. Byron, you want to just come wave at the people really quick. <laughs> that is so sad. Um, sorry to this man. Sorry to this man. <laughs> Tired of this church. Okay, so um, I just want to start with what you all have been in our mentions nonstop about, and that is impeachment. It finally came December 18th after several hours of debate. Uh, article 1 was the abuse of power article of impeachment. Article 2 was obstruction of Congress. The yeas had it on Article 1 at 230 yeas. The nays were at 197. Three didn't vote. One voted present. For Article 2, obstruction of Congress. Yeas had 229 to the nays, 198. Three again not voting, one voting present. In case y'all missed it, let me tell you. The one voting present was Tulsi Gabbard. There's more to come on that. Probably not in this podcast. Probably next lifetime. What I will tell you is we've been telling you this, that it was an impeachment-worthy president from the very beginning. The moment that he tweeted... It's unprecedented. There's been a podcast named as such. You probably should have known exactly what it was. He's not worthy. He's still not worthy. Yes, he's worthy of salvation, but he's not worthy to take the oath of president. That's the word. Naja just shook her head on that. So this is what I want to say. Black folks have always been right. It's the Kwanzaa edition. What we've been telling you from the very beginning and those allies among us who know what it is and have been knowing what it is. He has always not been worthy of this office. It's been time. You will note that neither of the articles that I mentioned, neither abuse of power nor obstruction of Congress, had anything to do with his blatant racism. And Congressman Al Green told us what it should have been from the beginning, that he should have been impeached for his racism. There's another president in history that went down for that. His name was Andrew Johnson. You can read about that in my book. I digress. Mm. This is the kind of blatant racism that called Mexicans drug dealers and rapists at the outset of his campaign. It's the kind of racism that put the lives of Maxine Waters and Ilhan Omar at risk. It is the kind of racism that called African countries shitholes. It is the kind that shifts the advocacy offices of civil rights throughout every federal government agency to Christian rights as opposed to protecting folks from racial discrimination and other insidious forms of bigotry. It is the kind that appoints over 170 federal judges and counting who are not only unqualified, but are already working to dial our civil rights progression back to the Jim Crow South. It is the kind of bigotry, it is the kind of racism that never deserved to become president of these United States. It's a moment of silence. Because we've been told y'all. All All of the yeses on the vote were Democrats. Um, Two Democrats voted nay with Republicans. One of them is New Jersey Representative Jeff Van Drew, who is now leaving the Democratic Party. He's clearly from Chris Christie's New Jersey and not Cory Booker's. And the other is Representative Colin Peterson from Minnesota, who opposed impeachment but will stay in the Democratic Party. There is a third Democrat, Representative Jared Golden, of Maine who voted to impeach Trump for abuse of power but not for obstructing uh, Congress. And two members missed the votes for personal re- rep- uh, for personal reasons. That's Democratic Representative Jose Serrano um, due to health complications and, Rep- and Republican Representative John Shimkus of Illinois who's retiring after this term. Um, there's another representative by the name of Duncan Hunter. Yeah, he's almost famous because he just pleaded guilty to misusing campaign funds and has been told by his leadership not to vote at all. Mm. We already talked about Tulsi. I shall not go back. But now we also have Justin um, Amish, who is from Michigan. He voted to impeach uh, Donald Trump on both of the counts. He has become an independent since reading the Mueller report. More to come on that shortly. But Donald Trump's impeachment occurred just 85 days after Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the impeachment inquiry. Um, Again, there are some of us who have been calling for his impeachment long before this particular, um, the articles of impeachment were put forth long before the hearings took place in the Judiciary and Intelligence Committee. What I will say to you is that it is important that we are aware of all that is at stake. I am constantly posting on social media, hashtag pay attention. You should pay attention to those tweets. You should read more about them in depth. 
What did I mean? Hashtag. What I say? Pay attention. Oh, hashtag pay attention. <laughs> Thank God for the, uh, what are you called? Nasha. No, not your name. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute. That's not what I meant. What is it called? Millennials. No, it's fine. Call and response church, I guess is what we can call it. Um, I do want to point your attention to what Nancy Pelosi said on the day of the impeachment vote. vote which was a solemn occasion. I'm not cheering for this. I wish we didn't have to impeach anyone, but more than anything, I wish y'all never elected this dude. Thanks, Russia. She said, we gather today under the dome of this temple of democracy to exercise one of the most solemn powers that this body can take, the impeachment of the president of the United States. And I, there are two other uh, moments that I want to make sure that we share with you, and they are from two members of Congress that I am so grateful for. Um, after several hours of debate, um, some of the comments that you'll hear on this podcast from Rep Representative John Lewis, um, who many of you will know is an American hero who fought for not only our right to vote, for, but for all of our civil rights. Super important. He talked about the mission and the mandate we have to be on the right side of history, and we'll play that clip. Madam Speaker, I rise with a heavy heart to support this resolution. When we came to Washington in 1961 to go on the Freedom Rise, we chose that day. When we came here on August 28, 1963, for the March on Washington, it was joyful. We met with a young president, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. When we came here on August 6, 1965, for the signing of the Voting Rights Act, we were excited, hopeful. We met with President Lyndon Johnson, but today, this day, we didn't ask for this. This is a sad day. It is not a day of joy. Our nation is founded on the principle that we do not have kings, we have presidents, and the Constitution is our compasses. When you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to set something, to do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? For some, this vote may be hard. But we have a mission and a mandate to be on the right side of history. And then also we have during the debate, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who you all know is the real people's champ and also my mentor and personal hero. She talked about the role of the president. She has long been talking about it on the House floor, um, what it means to be a patriot in this day and age. Um, we'll also play the clip from her impeachment comments. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the rules of debate won't allow me to cite all of the reasons why this president should be impeached. There are many. However, Madam Speaker and members of this House, to quote the late Maya Angelou, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. This day was not inevitable, but it was predictable because this president has shown himself time and time again to believe that he is above the law and he has no respect for our Constitution or our democracy. Based on all that we know about Donald Trump, we could have predicted he would have abused the power of the president by corruptly soliciting the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian President Zelensky to publicly announce investigations into his political opponent, former Vice President Joseph R. Biden. This impeachment resolution includes evidence that this president withheld $391 million of taxpayer funds that Congress appropriated for the purpose of providing vital military and security assistance to Ukraine to oppose Russian aggression, another blatant abuse of power. Our investigations revealed that this president advanced a discredited theory promoted by Russia alleging that Ukraine, rather than Russia, interfered in the 2016 United States presidential election for corrupt purposes in pursuit of personal 
political benefit. Never before in our history have we experienced a president who has so clearly conducted himself in a manner offensive to and subversive of the Constitution and directed his cabinet members, executive branch agencies, and other White House officials to defy lawful subpoenas from Congress. Was he attempting to hide wrongdoing? It is without question that this president has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to national security and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with self-governance and the rule of law because at every turn he has shown us who he is. It is no secret that this president could have been impeached a long time ago. Today we stand here with an irrefutable case and an indisputable set of facts that this president absolutely abused his power and obstructed Congress. Any other individual who would have been caught conducting themselves in the way this president has would have been prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It is shameful that any members of this House are willing to disregard the Constitution, turn a blind eye to hard facts, and ignore a confession from the President himself. History will remember those who were willing to speak truth to power. Yes, I call for Trump's impeachment early. This is our country. Our foremothers and our forefathers shed their blood to build and defend this democracy. I refuse to have it undermined. I wholeheartedly support this resolution. I'm proud that in the final analysis, justice will have been served in America and Donald Trump will have been impeached. And now we are transitioning to this is the end of another year. It is time for us to talk about the low lives of 2019. Naja, you wanted to do call and response in the last segment, <laughs> but here is your time for call and response. If you agree, you can say you agree. If you don't, you can say why. If you wish to debate, you can engage. If not, I'm going to keep rolling. <laughs> so low lives of 2019, the first we're going to start with um, is just disheartening. He's been a low life a long time, but people are finally coming to terms with the fact that R. Kelly needs more than help. He needs more than Jesus the Christ. He needs a jail cell, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, we saw under the great uh, work of uh, Dream Hampton that she did on uh, the Surviving R. Kelly uh, miniseries on Lifetime um, that really shed light on the many sadistic ways of R. Kelly, the abuse, um, the ways in which he manipulated the minds of young girls. He finally was arrested on state and federal sexual misconduct charges and lo and behold there is still an attorney out there byron who wants to um defend him mm. don't know how he don't know how so um r kelly was dropped by his record label there were many online platforms that decided to cancel r kelly as well and stop um putting his music up every time it comes on in one of like my live stream things i'm like how's yeah. that not only skip but like dislike or block so it doesn't come back mm -hmm. um and it's sad because r kelly had hits but what i'm not gonna ever support is the ways in which he hit on these young girls mm -hmm. there's not a song he could that he could sing that's worthy of um, our attention it is high time that r kelly is not just taken um taken care of right but um there are other men who don't have the profiles or the platforms that he has that have done many of the same things so mm -hmm. it's time for that to be addressed there's another low life in 2019 and it's not a person it is a television program that television program is what america yes. got talent and um america's got talent needs to be trolled for two reasons first nick cannon mm -hmm. now gabrielle union um, what has uh, been really crazy about this is NBC has made it terribly clear, at least through this program, that they will silence black voices um, because they disagree with them, whether it's how they appear, whether it's the stands that they take. Um, Gabrielle Union was told by America's Got Talent that her hair was too black at a time where we're passing legislation left and right. That mm -hmm. Yeah, that tells mm -hmm. black women your hair is beautiful as it is and we actually encourage it mm -hmm. um, at a time where... Um, you know, I've been able to go on CNN with cornrows, not asking permission, but just doing what I do. And black women are like, yes, I'm so glad you're doing that. That makes me feel safe in doing that at work. Mm -hmm. I don't think that people who are in positions of power and privilege understand how disheartening that is, even from your hair, mm -hmm. what's on your crown. The Crown Act is the legislation. She was um, fired after suggesting to PAs to report 
the comments that her hair was too black. And I think that what's interesting is um, America's Got Talent continues to suffer. But I think the other thing is, and I cannot think of this woman's name, um, the Latina actress um, who was just recently brought on uh, to them, apparently met with them to become the next host. And I think it provides um, a really good example of what allyship does not look like. Mm-hmm. What show is she on? Um, I can't think of her name, but we'll go back to that. But I just think that it's really important that when something as egregious as what happened to Gabrielle happens, right, that we make sure we are standing in solidarity as um, fellow oppressed people and we understand how important it is to stick together. This is Sophia ridiculous. Regard, regard. Y- yeah, uh, Sophia, you need to get your life together, sis. I'm going to make you um, 2A. You are also um, a low life of 2019 if you go forward with that um, meeting and then hosting America's Got Talent. The whole show needs to be canceled just based off mm-hmm. of that. So the third, not surprising, he should have been number one. He is probably the low life of the decade. It's none other than Naja's president, not Donald my Trump. president. <laughs> Donald, well, Byron's president, Donald president, Trump. Not my president. president. Donald Trump. Y'all's president, not mine. Y'all's president. Somebody, no, Lynn, he's your president. <laughs> Donald Trump. Um, why? Donald Trump has continued to tarnish the office, has continued to abuse power, has continued. He tells more lies mm. than Pinocchio says. I mean, it's just really bad. It's horrible. So um, it's time for Donald Trump to be dealt with. He's been impeached. We know that it's a stretch for um, the Senate to remove him from office. But listen, a girl can dream because he definitely shouldn't be occupying the White, Ho- White House at 1600 Pennsylvania. The one we built for free. Well, the one we built for free. How about that? Although he did at least acknowledge that in the the clip where he had a large gathering of um, black people. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, they were. I think they might have been white men in black people costumes. They were also paid. Do you think they were paid? <laughs> yeah. Pay- this message has been paid for by. <laughs> yeah. Either way, Donald Trump um, did acknowledge that uh, slavery happened. Somehow he was able to acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, the next person. Sis, I don't know what happened to you. Um, it's actually kind of sad because I really liked her while I worked in um, Congress. And that person is Tulsi Gabbard. Um, I've been really disappointed not only um, in Tulsi's run for president, but I've been super disappointed by the way she's treated people on the Democratic stage. She, of course, didn't make the debate last night. Oh, my God. I don't have any of my um, debate notes. Oh, I have them. I'll get back to that. But I need to stop after Low Life, do a debate highlight, and then go back. I forgot all about the debate. Jesus. But, yes, Tulsi <laughs> didn't make the debate stage. Um, but what we do know is on, on the stage that she made, wearing her white, white. Uh, looking like she's saving something, but really out to destroy and kill. Um, it sounds like a scripture, but the, mm-hmm. church, the church folks will know where that's from. Um, still kill and destroy out here in these streets in this white suit. She took down um, Kamala Harris with an an epic moment that was just unbelievable Mm -hmm. Um, a few debates ago. She came after Joe Biden um, in the last debate. I think Elizabeth Warren. Um, She's just been, you know, yeah, but going really hard. And I think not realizing that she is and maybe is maybe she does realize it used by. Uh, the Russians to destroy um, the fabric of unity. And that doesn't mean that um, Democrats and candidates shouldn't be held accountable for their record. Oh, Pete Buttigieg was the person she went after. Shouldn't be held accountable for their records. It does mean, though, that you should do it with decency, Mm -hmm. a certain amount of decorum. Soldier, I need you to get it together. Um, Man, this next one is awful, too. Amber Greger, who is the uh, police officer um, in Dallas who killed Botham, Botham John in his own apartment. She was um, only sentenced to 10 years in prison. It was a horrible um, trial to watch. You saw firsthand um, really not only how um, white privilege manifests itself, but the way that white women privilege would be ever present. Um, and it's just frustrating because she clearly killed this man in cold mm-hmm. blood. And um She's eligible for parole in five years. I think only um, the only worse thing than that, although I love um, humanity and compassion and empathy, is the judge in the case. Um, Judge Tammy Kemp, who um, just, I mean, there was a tremendous amount of national backlash because she not only hugged the killer, but she also gave her... Did she give her her Bible or was that the bailiff? Yeah, the bailiff, bailiff. gave her the Well, Bible. the bailiff needs to be 6A then because yeah. 
frankly, you know, I I, I understand like imp- it's important to share the love of God with people, mm-hmm. but like, I it's just it was too much for that me. I couldn't much. take it. I don't know if I'm less we of a Christian always because have to of, pick up the pieces for other people. Man, I just yeah, that was more than I could take. Yeah. It was already bad enough that day that she wasn't. Um, found yeah nine. for murder mm-hmm. for murder like if you're convicted of murder you need to have a sentence that reflects the same mm-hmm. next up um, as now someone who has a baby child in college um, who Niasha who is just like my daughter my bonus child at um, in college the fact that there are parents who are ignorant enough and desperate enough to pay all kinds of thousands of dollars to get their co- their kids in college because their kids didn't try. I'm not calling anybody's kids dumb, but they weren't adequately prepared to go to college. It's just outrageous. Part of the outrage for me is like everybody can't pay that. And then you you have kids or parents of kids who are trying to make sure their kids can go to good school mm-hmm. so they'll really be able to matriculate in college. And they get arrested and spend more jail time for, for lying about an address than parents who lied about the capabilities of their kids and paid as paid the same. Mm-hmm. Like putting them on teams of sports where they never played. Like Photoshop. Yeah, just, just, just Photoshop them in pictures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it for real? <laughs> yeah. And so Felicity got a little, uh, she got a little um, retreat out of it. And, um, you know, and I'm still mad at Felicity Huffman because of the role she played in uh, When They See Us. So I'm just mad at her all around. Felicity, And it was like perfect timing. She got charged and then we saw her. When They See Us. We're like, we really tired of you, Mm -hmm. Felicity. I don't know about Lori Loughlin. What was her name in Full House? You weren't old enough. What was her name in Full House? I remember her character, Uh, though. She was an auntie, right? And then she had twins? She No, she was Joey's uh, wife, right? uh Uh-huh. And girlfriend first. Yeah. I don't remember. Anyway, but I'm frustrated by that. Um, and then the uh, the noteworthy moment of this year, mm-hmm. one that was a paradigm shifting one for me, um, one that has really changed the ways in which I lean into community activity action, giving back to um, my local communities is Nipsey Hussle. Um, the day he di- he died, I had just been at a pop up um, for a, a restaurant that's based in Atlanta called Slutty Vegan here in LA and um, we were just literally minutes away from where he was killed and had been working on a project that we know will help to advance the overall community. So it was just crazy that it happened that way. Mm -hmm. He died on March 31st, he was only 33 years old. Um, Shout out to Lauren London who is just a gym and like super strong. The marathon continues. The marathon does continue. And I also want to shout out his family for all their work they're doing to continue um, his legacy and to his friends that are also working on the same. It just, it means the world. It It really does. We love you, Nip. We love you, Lauren. Yeah. Um, Okay. So the next segment will be a debate recap. So last night, the Democrats debated um, here in Los Angeles at Loyola Marymount University. And let me just say the two biggest problems I had with that debate. It was boring as hell. The energy was so low. And it was white as hell. Shout out to Andrew Yang, who made up the diversity on the stage. Like, it was just not good. Um, I wasn't able to make the debate last night, but Byron and Naja were able to make the debate. And I believe I'm snitching, but I don't mind because Naja does it to me all the time. You left early, didn't you? Well, you know, we might have gotten up and stepped outside. <laughs> stepped outside, walked to but the it car. But it wasn't really but for us. Yeah, you know? it wasn't for you. It wasn't for we you. We weren't being spoken to. I wasn't no. being spoken to. And it was cold in there. You got out to protest. We, we did. Okay. We wanted to take a stand, literally. Yes, and walk out. <laughs> and walked out. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your service. Shout out to the lady sitting beside us, though. Yeah. Oh, cool. Lord. What happened? Is the... Just talking. Okay. Just a new friend. Just yeah, cool. just a new friend. Byron's new friend. Oh, is that the one that told Byron that she, she was surprised that he spoke well? No, that's another oh, no, person. Yeah. That was in a whole other place. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> well, merging stories. Do you have any recaps from the debate? Any moments you want to share? If not, I'm going to share mine from watching it on the screen. Um, the energy was really, really low, low, which was really sad because it's like you have these people that could potentially, you know, be the leaders of our free world and nobody was excited um the crazy thing to me was who got the most applause when they came out yeah who was it who do you think it was 
Biden did good. Yeah, he but he didn't up. get the most applause. Who got who the most applause? It was between Elizabeth and huh. Pete. Mayor, Mayor oh Pete. yeah, no, you yeah. said that Mayor Pete did. Yeah, get mm-hmm. like, and I was so surprised. I mean, I guess we're in LA. Yeah, but I just laughed because Biden like ran up on the stage. He I did. Was and I was like, okay. He was like, I need to show them that I got a little extra, extra spring. Energy. Yeah, so he was like a little pep in his step. Yeah. yeah, but he followed after Sanders, so it was like I think he looked and was like, oh, I need to step it up a little bit. Yeah, and jump. And he Let me. He hop. did. Jump, jump, it was a hop skip. Yeah, a little hop skip. Um, he came out. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, I I um, have had the opportunity to. Well, now the only person remaining on the stage who I've interviewed is Elizabeth Warren. Um, and one of the moments on the stage that I was kind of offended by, and I get it because it polls well. Um, she talked about um, the lawyers and the lobbyists, the bought and paid for experts in D.C. And it bothered me because I am a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I'm not a lobbyist, mm-hmm. but I am a lawyer. We do represent mm-hmm. folks in D.C. Um, and the thing that bothered me about it is like I was actually really intentional about getting into this space so that it wasn't the run of the mill people doing the same kind of things. And I think the thing that also bothered me about it is like, sis, you were a lawyer. You're a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You did some of the same work. You consulted you for some of the interests that you're mm-hmm. talking about. I think um, Mayor Pete had a a smart comeback on that because it is something that she's going to have to reconcile. Mm-hmm. And a part of it is like the one thing that I hope that we learn from this, um, this administration um, and from this time in our history is like people cannot be placed in boxes and just demonized mm-hmm. in certain ways. Like it's just not good. Like somebody who, you know, carries a gun isn't automatically the devil, mm-hmm. right? Somebody who, um, is conservative with about their money and the ways in which they think the government should spend their money is not automatically the devil. Mm-hmm. One and the same, neither are people who support the Green New Deal. Mm-hmm. You know, and so to me, I'm just like, what would be responsible, I think, about the Democratic Party being the big tent is to acknowledge and to love on and to show compassion to and to understand the perspectives of everybody in the party, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about... Um, just putting someone like because you're different than me Mm -hmm. I don't fool with you Mm -hmm. I just think it's irresponsible and she's normally so much smarter than that with her words she does it with billionaires but that's kind of it Mm -hmm. um and then I I thought the other thing that was um interesting is Joe Biden um trying to kind of stay above the fray when they asked him how he would work with um the Republicans and he was saying I have to work with them but I have no love for them um, and so I think that he watched, he walked a really careful line. I thought it was smart what he did, but I do have to also hit him on his reparations answer. Mm. So there was a question that was asked, um, first to, uh, mayor Pete, who said he supports, um, HR 40, but he wants to look at long-term proposals, which I thought, I thought was, um, not great. Mm-hmm. I think especially given his record with black people right now, it's an easy layup. Yeah. Like just say, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're going to immediately work on issues. It's the 400th year. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge it's the 400th mm-hmm. year and really get to it. Um, instead, Joe Biden decided to answer the immigration question from the question before. He did not answer yes, the reparations yeah. piece. He has said historically he doesn't support reparations. I would love to know how his um, position has changed. I think it's also an interesting thing for, I think, black voters to consider what happens when you give all of your support Mm -hmm. to a candidate um, based on who they've been and not based on how the culture has shifted. It's okay for us to demand things of our candidates. He's saying he doesn't support something that would completely revitalize and reshape our economic prosperity, Mm -hmm. and he won't support that. So why are you giving your support to this particular candidate? I'm not saying don't. I'm saying understand your why. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved, uh, well, let me say this. I thought this was so interesting. My godson, Ryan, who is nine years old, was watching the debate with me. And at first, when he looked at Tom Steyer, he was like, who is this guy? (laughs) Right? He was like, who is this? He's in the race. Like, you know, Ryan is like a a 75-year-old man on the inside. (laughs) And then, like, 15 minutes into the debate, he's like, I like this guy. He's cool. And I was like, who? 
He was like, that one. I was like, Tom Sire is the same way you started. He's like, yeah, I like what he says. I don't know what it was. We didn't get into it. That's so cute. Though. Right That's after funny. that, he, mm-hmm. like, said, you know, he he threw a whole fit and kicked me in the head three times with that story yeah. for another day. You know, Tom Steyer, I mean, he's a, he's a good guy, but he has to stop saying he was the first person to bring up impeachment. Impeach- yeah, he should stop. It's erasure. Yeah. There was first there was Congresswoman Maxine yes, Waters. Please. Yeah, I agree. Maybe he means the first person not in Congress. No, maybe he meant he, what he, he said. Say <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah, I was saying he should, should say that. We should hold him to the <laughs> Um, I thought the other thing that was dope is um, Andrew Yang was up there representing the only candidates of color on the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, there were no other. Uh, Tulsi did not qualify. She said if she would have qualified, she wouldn't have gone anyway. Cory Booker, who is still in the race, um, was not on the stage. And neither was Julian Castro, mm-hmm. who you guys know I love as well. Um, and and I think that the frustration is with this, like he had to he almost had that moment that so many of us have at work or like with clients like, well, what do black people think about this? You know, <laughs> and um, they were like, well, you're the you know, there's no more candidates of color except for you on stage. What do you think? And he like said some really good things about Kamala and Corey that I respected. But he also took it right back to, well, you know, what would help if, the, if everybody was on the stage that guaranteed minimum income I've been mm-hmm. telling you about, mm-hmm. which I was like, you better tell him about your freedom dividend right. when you're when the points allow. So that dude is message discipline. I respect it. Mm-hmm. One more moment that I thought was really incredible. Um I didn't think that um, Bernie Sanders had a great night. Um, but one thing that I thought was damning for him and almost tone deaf was this uh, moment where he didn't want to answer the question that Andrew Yang had to just answer about how white the stage was. Mm-hmm. And instead he asked if he could uh, punt to climate change. And I'm not the other moderator said, with all due respect, answer the question. And it was this moment was like, ooh, you know, everybody else couldn't even see it. But anyway, I mean, it, like he does that all the time. But that one was I thought that was really telling, mm-hmm. um, especially because I do believe Bernie Sanders um, cares about black folks. I do believe, you know, he has an agenda that's representative of some of our issues. But around um, reparations, around representation, mm-hmm. I think that he misses the boat a lot. Um there was a big back and forth on campaign finance reform based on Mayor Pete's um, super expensive in the cave wine fundraiser. Um, and I thought that was interesting. I thought it was also handled well. Mm-hmm. Like it was a nasty tiff at first, but I thought they got to a decent place. Um, I loved when Warren was told you would be the oldest person ever inaugurated. And she was like, yeah, but I'd be the youngest woman. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a perfect little clap back. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy Klobuchar, I thought had a strong night. Mm-hmm. Um, she really, really did. And I've been a little frustrated watching her throughout. I felt like most of her other debate um, performances were truly just that performances. Mm-hmm. It felt like she was looking for a viral moment, and yesterday seemed like she was really authentic. Yeah, very strong. Um, but I, I have to say this as a black woman who's also an attorney. It frustrates me that Amy Klobuchar has been given passes that Kamala was not given, right? there's Her prosecutorial record isn't super favorable to us, but yet Kamala wasn't given that space. I'm sure there are some people in our community who would argue that um, because she's a black woman, they just mm-hmm. can't go for it. I get it, but I just think it's whack. You got um, it a triple standard, right? Yeah. Triple standard. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe quadruple at this point. Um, the other thing Amy Klobuchar did, though, that shade she threw at Mayor Pete when he was like, I can win this, blah, blah. She was like, but the thing is, you tried <laughs> to run in Indiana and you lost by 20 points. Mm-hmm. I was like, woof. It was it was a burn. It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. You hate to see it. Um. Joe Biden also had a really powerful moment where he talked about, uh, wait, was that him? That wasn't him. I'm sorry. Sorry, Elizabeth Warren. I am not silencing you. It was Elizabeth (laughs) Warren who had the conversation about or told the story about the insulin prescription. Mm -hmm. For one, you guys might have already walked out by then. (laughs) She's like, "Mm -hmm." Uh, mm-hmm. The insulin prescription for one veteran that he shares with his whole, uh, with his family, a family of three because all of them have diabetes. It was a powerful moment, I thought, very salient to kind of make an argument, a sound argument for what she says about health care so often. Um, and then Joe Biden had some moments where he talked about uh, he and Joe Biden's call sheets that I was like, oh, that's really cool. They mm-hmm. call people who aren't donors to talk to them and mm-hmm. connect with them. <laughs> Um, and so now we will shift from that to the best moments of 2019. Um, yeah, maybe that could be like a highlight because the other stuff was sad. We talked about the sad stuff of 2019, had to put the debate in there because I forgot. 
<clears throat> the best moments. I would say well, number one on my list, there's an entire podcast for it. It is the Mueller Report. Um, I read the entire Mueller Report on my podcast. I'm not saying that that was particularly fun. It was exhausting. Mm -hmm. But it was important to me to ensure that people understood how much Russians interfered with the 2016 election, how much Donald Trump <clears throat> and his campaign were engaged in said interference, um, and really why I think he should have been impeached to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but again, please note that both of the articles, neither of them, Neither article have anything to do with the Mueller report. It's all about Ukraine, and I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand that. Um, the report is incriminating on its face. Justin Amash, who is the former Republican, now independent, um, switched parties after reading the whole report, tweeted that he was going to be supporting Donald Trump's impeachment based on that report. But again, it's not the reason why your president was impeached. Mm. Um, the report was released on April 18, 2019. It's 448 pages. Again, there's six podcasts or something about it that I did, so we can go back from that. I'm not going to go all the way through all of that. you got to talk about the number of people, though. Mm -hmm. The like number the, of people. Li who lied during the Russia probe? Oh, Michael do you want to say? Cause I, oh, I see it. Um, this There's more than that. That's why I didn't read that. Um, there are several people in Donald Trump's camp who lied testified under oath and lied under oath. But um, the numbers that we have in here are not right, so I will spare you, but just remember the name Michael Cohen and others. Um, okay, the side note that I do want to make sure I share is that Russia right now is still interfering in elections. Mm -hmm. Russia interfered in um, the election of uh, the new governor of Florida. I do not think he is legitimate, just like I do not think... The um, Republican president is legitimate because Russia interfered. There is FBI proof of said interference in Florida, and they're still playing games right now. Let me tell you how. Just this week, I have received two emails, and I get, by the way, I get FaceTime calls from Russia. I get phone calls from Russia. I don't pick them up. Huh. Yeah, in yeah, real life. Mm -hmm. I received two emails this week with um, two Russian companies trying to get me to do influencer engagement. One of them is June, J-O-O-N. I'm going to make sure y'all see these emails. And then Zorka, Z-O-R-K-A dot Moby. When I looked up their information in my email, they had sent something else to me in December 2018. And my, my thoughts here are simple. They are trying to get access to user data, people who follow me, so that they can influence what you see, right? Part of one of the buying programs was I would post a store up on my page, and then if you click through, they have all your information. So I want other people who are influencers or celebrity, uh, tier Z celebrities like me, pay attention because they think that you're vulnerable prey as well. Do not accept their money. And it's June, J-O-O-M. Oh, M? M, June. June. Zoom and Zorka. So we're going to make sure y'all see those. I'm going to post those on my Did socials. Did you say tier Z celebrity? Yeah, I'm a tier Z celebrity. What does that mean? It means very low level. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like who? Oh, oh you look she... familiar. <laughs> you look like my cousin. She's yeah. being modest. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next one that I want to share um, that is much more of a feel-good moment mm -hmm. Um Big Brother Tyler Perry opened his studio this year. It was this incredible, incredible, incredible event in Atlanta where everybody who's somebody and those of us who are Tier Z <laughs> went to the studio opening. Um, it is a fully black owned major motion picture studio. Um, it is now def definitely solidified Atlanta as an entertainment hub and is going to play a tremendous amount of um it's going to be a tremendous amount of dip, make a tremendous amount of difference for people's economic viability in Atlanta. Um, there was this video he showed at the beginning of the opening um, where he talks about dream big. And Tyler, I want you to know that since I saw that video, just like I tell you all the time, I've been dreaming bigger and I'm so, so grateful for what you're doing. This is um, the only major film stu studio in the country owned by African-Americans. It sits on what was formerly the mm -hmm. Fort McPherson Army base. It was acquired by Tyler in 2015. It is a 330-acre lot located in the center of Atlanta. It is the largest, one of the largest production facilities in the country. It has 40 buildings, 200 acres of green space. Um, and I think for context, for people to understand, 330 acres to Warner Brothers Studios in California, they're 110 acres 
with an additional 32 acres on a nearby ranch. Uh, my math not might not be that be good, might not be that <laughs> good because I went to law school to prevent that vulnerability from ever being shared. But what we know is that's damn near double the size. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he has 12 purpose uh, built sound stages, and each of them are named after um, some amazing history makers in our community, Cicely Tyson, Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey, Whoopi Goldberg, Will Smith, Halle Berry, Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, Ruby D. Ossie Davis, and Diane Carroll. The dopest thing is Diane Carroll's soundstage was named after her and dedicated to her the week of her death. So thank you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. The third one is also an Atlanta-based entity that is making history and has gone viral on social. You have to say, once you bite into one of these delicious non-meat-based sandwiches <laughs> by the black-owned restaurant called Slutty Vegan in Atlanta. You have to say, I've been sluttified. So good. So, so good. good. So good. Full so Amen good. Corner on here. They on here checking their social media, but they check back in for that, y'all. Please know <laughs> that it was um, founded by uh, Pinky Cole in the summer of 2018 and since then has gone super viral. She graduated from Clark Atlanta University. Shout out to the HBCU community hey. and shout out to Slutty Vegan for putting the plant-based sensation on the map. Ooh. Ooh, you I was got standing in line for that. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I want a burger right now. She had everybody standing in line at the pop-ups. Yeah. yeah. New York was wrapped around the mm-hmm. block. It was, we got called ahead. We just the VIP entrance for the one here. Oh, I escorted oh. somebody to make it feel like they were important just to get to the front. <laughs> And then I, we had to fight our way. I'm so mad. At I stood in line. <laughs> you stood in line? Yeah. Well, next time, come with the tier Z. <laughs> Their benefit being a tier Z. Um, the, the next one is the reparations hearing this year. Um, it was on Juneteenth, which is a very special day in our community, which is, you know, truly a day of freedom. Unlike the 4th of July, the hearing was held on H.R. 40. Um, which is now introduced by Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. It was. It's not just legislation to study reparations. It also is uh, ensuring an opportunity to uh, put proposals forward so we can move the conversation along to action. Um, Ta-Nehisi Coates testified. So did Danny Glover. Um, we have not had another uh, or we haven't had a, a discussion or a hearing on the reparations bill since 2007. Um, This was monumental and it was important given, again, that this is our 400th year of being in the United States. There's also another big congressional moment, and that is Terry Sewell, right after um, voting rights was gutted. The Voting Rights Act was gutted in uh, 2013 with Shelby versus Holder at the Supreme Court level. There was a, a move by her to introduce the Voting Rights Advancement Act. Um, which is H.R. 4, this Congress, it finally passed after being reintroduced several times. Um, December, just this month, um, Mm -hmm. in December 2019, she's been sponsoring it. It's been co-sponsored. It is supposed to amend the Voting Rights Act of 1965 to ensure that voter suppression is limited. There's another, a new coverage formula to ensure that states that have a history of discriminatory practices um, are checked because that is another important piece of what was gutted from HR, I'm sorry, from the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Also, the 1619 Project, Mm -hmm. oh my God, speaking of being here for 400 years, I just bought 20 copies of the the New York Times um, piece. It is epic, it is amazing. Shout out to friends who worked on this. Mm -hmm. Um, It is a a deep uh, reflection piece, or several reflection pieces on um, being here since 1619, how far we've come in reexamining um, the legacy of slavery in America. Um, one notable quote from the project, the 4th of July in 1776 is regarded by most Americans as the country's birthday. But what if we were to tell you that the country's true birthday, the moment that its defining contradictions mm. first came into the world was in late August 1619. Mm. And for me, um, I think my final highlight of this year is turning 40. Um, I had the opportunity before coming into this year to receive a note from my former boss, Dr. Leslie Baskerville, who shared with me that this was the year of Angela. And what we learned from that is, um, I know some of you are like, okay, so it's a whole year named after you. Not exactly. Going back to that 1619 project, speaking of the 400th year, 
Angela is the first documented slave that we have note of in this country. Our name means bringer of truth. And so in this year, the one thing that I hope that we have done well is told the truth about what this nation really is and tell the truth about how we go forward. I'm wearing today the bracelet that my best friend got me. Um, it, my word for the year was liberation because I wanted to be an always free. And so I'm grateful for this bracelet. Um, this year has also been about a lot of change for me personally. I now have my godsons, Ryan and Javon, who are 9 and 15, respectively, every other week. Learned a lot about parenting. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Voice is gone all the time, like now. <laughs> um, but it has been so rewarding. Kids show up and show you yourself mm -hmm. all the time. And I've just learned so much from them. Also, I think just over the last couple of weeks, I learned something incredible from Naja and Kareem. And that is um, that everybody is not you. Everybody doesn't show up in the world and deliver the same way you do. And the great thing about it is that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think so many, so much time, so many times in life and so often, we're always like, well, if it were me, mm -hmm. I would have did such and such, or I would never do that. But the thing is, that person is not you. They're not you, Byron. Byron over there on Shade Room. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, for it's real. like that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was a really bad laugh. It's scary. There's a backstory for it. But here's the point um, we have to understand that because they do it different than us doesn't mean their way is wrong. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that the way that we do it isn't necessarily the best way. And when we think it is the best way, it is a form of arrogance that needs to be checked. It just it just is. It's because you wouldn't do it that way or you would never do that doesn't mean that their way is wrong. It just means it's different. And shout out to mommy who has always said, Angela, perspective taking is the greatest skill you can learn in life. That is a new perspective, mom. Shout out to you. Love you. Um, what freedom means to me is so much. That's why liberation was my word for this year. There's a book on that thing coming soon, right after this book proposal is submitted, but it will be happening at the end of this year. So thank you to everyone who's contributed in some way to my freedom and to my oppression, because for that reason, I have a greater understanding of what it means to mm -hmm. be free. Because freedom looks good. On you. Oh, Shout yeah. out to you in the infomercial QVC, because you you're go. right there with your whole shirt on. Brand ambassador. Yeah. We don't owe you any money though, Tier Z. <laughs> See the thing I'm about not being a tier. A tier, the thing, not a tier. The thing about being a Tier Z celebrity is they don't pay you for your shout out. <laughs> Next up, we have winners of 2019. Uh, the Squad Woo! is first on my list. I got to do a live podcast with the Squad. It is amazing. If you haven't checked it out, it is an incredible opportunity. To show you all who they are as human beings, mm -hmm. as leaders, as sisters, as friends, um, it was just an incredible, incredible moment I got to share with them. It is a must listen. And I still think it's the only interview that they've done all together. Um, so it's actually fascinating. But I mean, I'm going to give you a battery pack because it's done charging and now the battery's going back down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there was that happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> um, they are amazing. If you all do not know who the squad is, I'm not talking about CNN squad right now. I'm talking about the squad in Congress. That is Representative Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez of New York, Representative Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, and Representative Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts. Ayana even tells us who her first kiss was on that mm -hmm. podcast in a rapid round. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all throw shade at my rapid round. I hope you get uh, get a life because we have fun around here too. Okay, she said it's a lot. not that serious. Politics she said a lot of. You should ask. We should do like a little quiz because uh -huh. she said like what his name was. She did. Mm -hmm. She said what he, he had looked freckles. like. He had, mm -hmm. Oh, you, you want me to tell the answer? Well. That's just one answer. It's, it's for everybody <laughs> out there who needed a handout <laughs> or a hand up. Um, and then, you know, of course, that the squad was told by Donald Trump to go back to where they came from. And so they went back to their districts to continue to rally the troops mm -hmm. to what? Impeach his ass. There we have mm -hmm. it. Next up, five black pageant queens holding major titles this year. Mm -hmm. We have Miss World, Tony Ann Singh from St. Thomas, Jamaica. We have Miss Universe, which is Zozi. I hope I don't hear your name, sis. Zozi Beanie. Tunzi, and she is from South Africa. We have Miss America, who is Nia Franklin. We have Miss USA, who is Chesley Christ. And we have Miss Teen USA, Kaylee Garris. 
if that's not a way to honor the 400th year, my sister, my brother, I don't know what we would do. All power to the people. All power Amen. to the people and to the beauty queens repping the people. Mm-hmm. The next one is Sunny Hostin, who on The View is regularly speaking for um, those of us who may be disenfranchised, Af- the black community and the Latinx community. Sunny, v- Sunny holds it down on The View. There is a clip on my Instagram right now where she's speaking truth to power. Um, check in Maggie Meg. That's not Megan the Stallion. That's Megan McCain. Okay. Um, shout out to Megan McCain for the many ways in which you troll black women in real life and on The View. Um, I hope you get your life, sis. Like, for real. It's really bad. Um, you seem angry talking. and hostile. Just stop mm-hmm. talking. You know what's so oh, funny? Or let somebody else talk. You don't have to talk over people. Well, what's so crazy to me is, like, you know how, like, somehow black women have earned this, like, this title, this brand of being an angry black woman? She, like, embodies mm-hmm. anger to me. And, like, on a, on a for real note, I really hope that she takes an opportunity over the break to heal. I have my dad. I don't know what that's like, just from a human standpoint. Mm -hmm. If that's what it's about, I hope she really takes an opportunity Mm -hmm. to truly heal um, because it's sad. But I do think she acted like that before her dad passed. Sorry, but I think that's true. Um, But Sunny, you're the real MVP. Um, That clip is up on my page right now doing wonders because people could relate to you being them at work. They Mm -hmm. felt you, sis. The next one is the whistleblower. Um, the whistleblower is the person who Donald Trump, the whistleblower is the person who the Republican Party has been trying to go after, find out who he is or she, the person, right? The whistleblower is the reason why we now have an impeached president who hopefully if there's a miracle and Moscow Mitch takes several seats, um, Mm -hmm. may get removed from office, um, because it's just the right thing to do at this point. Mm -hmm. But the whistleblower said more than half a dozen U.S. officials informed him about the events he disclosed about Ukraine and multiple White House officials with direct knowledge of the call informed the person that after an initial exchange of pleasantries, the president used the remainder of the call, the president of the Ukraine, to advance his personal interests. Shout out to the whistleblower. You gave us quite a gift. Mm -hmm. Next person is Centoya Brown. Why? She was sentenced to life um, in prison for killing the man who trafficked her but was released in 2019 after much work and advocacy not only by Centoya but by the community. Um, She was 16 years old um, and she now has been released from a Nashville prison after serving so much time for no reason. Mm -hmm. 15 years. Um, And so, yes, she was granted clemency by um, then-Governor Bill Haslam and um, hopefully... Um, since 2004 uh, happened, what happened with, with uh, the, the killing in 2004, which is truly an act of self-defense, she will be able to regain her life truly. I know there's um, stories that are going to be told, mm-hmm. and I'm definitely going to buy that book when it comes out. Yeah. Next is Congressman Cummings, mm-hmm. Elijah Cummings. You are such a true hero. Mm-hmm. Um, he stood up to President or to Donald Trump, I don't like calling him president, Donald Trump when he came after and targeted um, Baltimore in just ridiculous ways. Um, he was the chairman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee. Congressman Cummings um, just just done so much to blaze a trail for so many of us. An incredible, incredible hero. Um, you are sorely missed. I'm, I'm thankful for all the time that I got to spend with you to learn from you. And thank you for all the things you do or have done to make the world better um especially starting with your district in baltimore Mm -hmm. um next up is congressman conyers who i like adored from afar as well before i got to work um, for the cbc for both of these members but congressman conyers um died this year as well actually the day after my birthday Mm -hmm. He was the longest serving black member of Congress, one of the founders of the Congressional Black Caucus, the former chair of the Judiciary Committee. He was a brilliant lawyer, um, truly also a people's champ, truly represented the interests of Detroit. Um, He was a key sponsor of the Martin Luther King holiday bill, introducing it for several sessions for 20 years before it was finally recognized um, and signed into law in 1989. He was also the first ever member to introduce H.R. 40, which now, of course, Sheila Jackson Lee champions. um, And he introduced it every year since 1989 until he retired. So shout out to Congressman Conyers. We want to also continue your legacy. Mm -hmm. 
Last, well, two more. Um, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who called for the impeachment of Donald Trump long before it was ever really truly heard and recognized. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, for creating this Congress, the Diversity and Inclusion Subcommittee on the Financial Services Committee, it was powerful. She was um, challenged on why she should do it by Democrats and Republicans, and she did it anyway because it was the right thing. I hope that the uh, House leadership will be courageous enough to create diversity and inclusion subcommittees on every other committee next Congress. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all you do for being the conscience, Congresswoman Waters. And last, Congressman Al Green for also not only calling for Donald Trump's impeachment, but for calling for impeachment for his racism and bigotry. It's so, so, so important. Um, that you did that, Mr. Green. We love you and honor you as well. Okay, next is Decade Highlights. Just quickly, um, the first iPad came out in 2010. Instagram was created in 2010. LeBron James participated in the Decision Television program where he announced that he's signing with the Miami Heat. In 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed. Um, in 2011, the Oprah show ends. Oh, it was the end of an era, but it was an oh, incredible era. Yeah. In 2011, Drake populi- popularized the phrase YOLO. What, do you remember what that <laughs> means, Naja? You only live once. Praise the Lord. That's the motto. Praise the motto. Oh, you got the whole song? Okay, and then 2012, <laughs> President Obama was reelected. My um, cried. Yes, there's so much happened in 2012 that also wasn't good. We know the school shooting at Sandy Hook mm-hmm. happened that year. Trayvon Martin was brutally murdered mm-hmm. by George Zimmerman that year. Um, LeBron won his first championship that year. Scandal premiered on television. The real Olivia. I got so tired of people calling me Olivia Pope. Kerry Washington, I yeah. love you, but I was mad about that part. Mm-hmm. Um, especially I used to tell people, I'm not sleeping with nobody's president. Though, okay, <laughs> it's not happening. 2013, Black Lives Matter uh, emerged after, of course, what happened with Trayvon Martin and trying to demonstrate the importance of black lives and being seen. Lupita wins an Oscar for 12 Years a Slave. 2014, um, Bill Cosby. Oh, that's so sad. Bill Cosby was accused of sexual assault. Man, and you learned he really was not Heathcliff Huxtable. That was a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Blackish premiered on television, and there were even more shootings. Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, just reflecting on this decade, y'all. A lot has happened. Mm -hmm. 2015, um, same-sex marriage becomes legal. Um, Also in 2015, the Charleston Nine, um, the Emanuel Nine, Mm -hmm. were killed um, at Bible study Mm -hmm. in South Carolina, um, and then we had the release of Kendrick Lamar's All Right, which really became a movement song mm-hmm. um, and an affirmation that we will be all right. Um, Empire premieres on television. Shout out to Taraji calling the girl Boo Boo Kitty. Mm-hmm. It has become a whole movement, sis. 2016, Colin took a knee uh, and has forever been penalized for that. Um, but Colin, we see you. We thank you for your advocacy. Beyonce performed formation with the Black Berets at the Super Bowl. We know Naja loves B. And released Lemonade. And let me tell you, even when I wasn't mad at the boo at the time, every time Lemonade was on, I was mad all over again since we stand with you. (laughs) Had that hot sauce in your bag? Listen, swag. Uh, Kobe Bryant played his final game in 2016. Donald Trump was allegedly elected president in 2016. And the Oscars So White hashtag really went viral in 16. 2017, Get Out was released. Jordan Peele, you are so dope. Your mind, the ways in which you challenge us to talk about race through this and so many other ways. Thank you. He won an Oscar for the film. And then the Women's March uh, 2017 in January to challenge Donald Trump on all his bigotry. Shout out to my friends who've been the founders and the creators of that march. Um, The Me Too movement was started and the Unite the Right rally was held in Charlottesville with tiki torches. Shout out to Wes Bellamy Mm -hmm. for all the work you did through the Equity Project um, to make sure they were mad enough to hold their little tiki torches um, and that the Confederate statues would finally come down. 2018, Beyonce. There's another Beyonce highlight. Of she course. performs, yes, <laughs> performed at Coachella, becoming the first black woman, I believe, to ever perform on the main stage like that, to be yes. the Beachella. the headliner, the headliner. Um, and also celebrated HBCUs at that thank you at a time where HBCUs need that cash to make sure they can keep their doors open and continue to educate the best and the brightest among us. Thank you for that. 
the Black Black Panther movie was mm-hmm. released, mm-hmm. and that was incredible. We're still out here dreaming about Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Well, the U.S. <laughs> apparently, right? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, 2018 is also when elections were stolen from Stacey Abrams and Andrew Gillum, who should have been the governors of Georgia and Florida, respectfully. We already did 2019, but that is our reflection on the decade, y'all. We've had a lot this happen. Mm-hmm. Q&A? Mm-hmm. This ask is it. Angela. We have an Ask Angela segment where we promise to keep it real and let you all in on everything that's going on. This has been a long one. I didn't realize we had so much information. But, yes, let's go. What we got? All right. Oh, Fire is like, it's where, on you. Where are they at? I'll share. A recent poll shows Trump's approval at 3% for black women and 15% for black men. What do you say to these black males advocating for Trump 2020? From Worthy Women 1. Okay, Worthy Women. Um, Worthy Women, thank you for the question. What I would say to you is that I don't know that um, 15% one, like, says who? I remember Michael Cohen said that from Donald Trump, like, who worked in Donald Trump for a long time ago. I don't know that it's really 15% of black men, but I also don't know that their support means they're actively advocating for Donald Trump. What I will say is if that number is that high, it's too damn high, and we need to do something about that. And I think part of it is just incumbent upon us um, as people who are educated on what's happening from a policy perspective on what the damage is that Donald Trump has already caused and how much more damage could exist. I remember a moment where he asked, um, what in the hell do you have to lose talking Mm -hmm. to the black community? We have to lose a lot. And I think we're starting to see that at some of these um, judicial appointments. There's now over 170, as I've said. Um, And so we have to make sure people understand what is all at stake. Family values, um, when that is said, is often at the antithesis of what best serves us. So we have to make sure that our people are all aware of everything that's happening. Um, The immigration battle, the ways in which that is adversely impacting people of color of all races, um, and so much more, I think, is is super important. So we just have to make sure we're, we're telling people what's going on and they're aware so that their votes are not just cast but they're actively um they're actively aware and can use their votes for their power Mm. that's it Mm. next question christy goody on facebook said angela why hasn't the media covered all of the missing black girls how can the kidnapping and trafficking of black women become a focal story so I do think that uh, it's a great question, Christy. Uh, the thing that I think I should I would point to, there's a CNN story um, where um, the FBI's National Crime Information Center made clear that there were more than 424,000 missing children um, under 18 in 2018. And um, 37% of those children are black. 37%, even though black kids only make up 14% of the overall population of children in the United States. And I think it's a way for us to understand that um, we are still arguing that black lives matter, um, even when it comes to kidnapping, who's missing, who's deemed as valuable, where there should, whether or not they should be on a story on the back of an old school milk carton, right? Like mm-hmm. who decides um, who is valuable enough to be reported on and discussed? Um, There have been a number of stories talking about the numbers of missing black girls, but not as many on individual cases Mm -hmm. of them. And I think that um, the other thing I would do is just kind of point to you, point you to a Breakfast Club interview with um, an an advocate in this space, Tony Rivera, who was a human trafficking survivor, went on to traffic people herself Mm -hmm. and then is now like a rescuer. She rescues women out of those circumstances. And I think that it's important to understand there are people doing that work, whether the media sees them or not. Um, but I do think there have been some stories, and that one is an, one that's included. Okay, I'm going to lighten the mood up a little bit. Okay. How do you practice self-care from... Is that lighter? That's not light? <laughs> okay, go ahead. We could go somewhere else. Mm-mm, that's fine. Can we get some diet and exercise, exercise tip? Because dot, dot, dot. Cabo. <laughs> oh, Cabo. That is lighter. Okay. Who's this from? This is from This Beautiful Life. <laughs> it's spelled this interesting. This Beautiful Life. On Instagram. Um. So, first of all, what is sad is that <laughs> I am in the 
This is gonna be so bad, but it's true. I'm in the worst shape of my life. Like I am in such bad shape. I have not been to the gym in I don't know how long. I'm so glad that Angela Manuel Davis um, left Soul Cycle, but and of course that's when my I, I was boycotting, so I couldn't go anyway. I'm still not going. Um, but she's now starting um, something called Army. I'm so glad she's doing that. I will be there to get my life all the way together and snatched. In terms of self care. <laughs> um, I believe in sleep. Um, I believe in reading things that are good to me. I have a devotional by Richard Rohr. I love every day. It is so amazing. Most days, I'm not going to lie, some days I do not read that. Um, what else? Um, listening to music is amazing to me. Um, and doing things that are fun, spending time with family and friends. I'm going to a Anita Baker concert tonight. Like, you know, just do things for yourself. Make sure you take care of yourself because you can't take care of anybody else. And you don't take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. My cousin asked me, um, "How do you, how did you get like that for Cabo?" And I was like, "Child, she just built like that because she don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> so disrespectful. This is rude. I was, I, I should do something. I will do something. I used to have like a little, some little packs. It used to be at least like four. It's no packs. I'm about to start running, walking. You just no, I'm not sit up <laughs> before you go. To I bed. just told you I'm gonna go to Angela Manuel Davis's new thing. There okay, yeah, Army. All right, well, I'm going to take it to a career direction. Um, okay. How do you handle the on-air spats off the air? And is it hard to not take things personally? Or have you ever had an argument that increased off the air? And that is from obviously on Twitter who wants to stir up some drama today. You think that's what they're doing? Um, obviously. 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 <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously um, yeah, I mean, there have definitely been um, conversations on air. Um, when they're really heated, honestly, I'm super sensitive. So when they're really heated, I cry after. Um, and it makes me mad that I cry after because most of the time it's about, like, being frustrated. Um, my dad is normally, like, the shoulder. Like, I'll call him after and be like, I can't believe such and such. And my dad is the person who's always like, you whoop the ass. And I'm like, Daddy, that's not really what I need to hear right now. But for whatever reason, it's still comforting. It's comforting mm -hmm. Just, you know, knowing that he's there. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I wish, honestly, that some of the conversations we had on air never were on air. You know, I think that everybody doesn't deserve a platform. And some people... Um, say things that are reckless and result in further division and I never want to contribute to that um, I try really really hard to make sure that the things that I say are factually accurate um, that I'm respond. I just think that like I really believe life and death is in the power of the tongue so I can make this better I can make it worse and to me making it better is like if someone is just lying the whole time on a segment making it better is like fact checking mm -hmm. you know um if someone is disrespecting me, like for every woman that came before me, I'm going to shut down the disrespect, like not today. But I would rather it be a conversation where we might disagree respectfully, but it's respectful. And that can't always be the case. So it just depends. I, I, I hope going into 2020, there's less um, conversations that are just like the battle royale and more building for something, you know, different, right. better, more hopeful. But I don't know, based on how this election is set up. It's okay to cry, though, you know. Yeah. Jesus wept. I cry. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Hey. I do know Jesus wept. I do know it's okay to cry. I just don't want to cry about that. Yeah. Like, not about TV segments. Mm hmm mm hmm What else? Okay. This is from... Let's get these a little tighter. What else? Sunshine Bright on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> What's the purpose Sunshine of in impeachment if it's not getting the F out? Um, so the purpose of impeachment is to, um, um, the house has impeachment proceedings. Um, they introduce articles, articles of impeachment based on those proceedings. If there was enough information to move forward, um, the house by majority vote can impeach the president based on what those articles are and what it is. If you could liken it to criminal court is, um, like an indictment, like someone was indicted based on their wrongdoing and then the Senate has the actual trial. Mm -hmm. So he is impeached and the purpose of that is to under make sure that the American people understand that their representatives were working in their best interest and not letting any president or any public official act as though they're above the law. Um, I think it definitely serves a purpose. I think it sucks that we have someone who 
um, is the Senate majority leader that is in such a role where he's like, no matter what it says, I'm not this this trial is basically stacked because I'm I'm literally coordinating with the White House on this trial. Mm -hmm. It's sick. It's like, why can't you just like obey the oath you took, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. that is the point to me of. What should be happening with the removal part? But the impeachment process is always two parts. Mm-hmm. He does not necessarily have to be removed. He could resign, but, you know, his pride won't let him. He's like Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other podcast on why he's Nebuchadnezzar. But mm-hmm. what else? So Achille, Achille 300 on Instagram asks, why are you still hell-bent on voting when both parties have no black agenda we can trust? Hmm. Um, I think that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would say is that, I will always exercise my right to vote because it is just a part of my political power. And when I go to hold elected officials accountable, I want to ensure that um, I have a leg to stand on, meaning I did my part. Now, why aren't you doing your part? Mm -hmm. Whether I voted for them or not, they have an obligation to serve. But if I turned out for an election and engaged civically in that way, I think I have more strength. And I don't believe that people will all of a sudden embrace and get your demands if you've never demanded them. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that you can have an agenda that's never been communicated with people who aren't educated about what your needs are, about what your asks are, if you never have the conversation. So I believe that um, given where we are, I am more aligned with the Democratic Party than the Republicans. Um, I certainly don't support the Republican Party. I don't love everything about the Democratic Party, but there are some people who work within the Democratic Party who are registered Democrats and are elected as Democrats. Many of them, my former bosses, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, who I am aligned with. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to never necessarily agree with everyone in a party that is known to be a big tent. Mm -hmm. I am progressive in my thinking, in my policy making, in my policy negotiations, and I'll never forget where I came from to that end. But I don't believe in a protest strategy. I don't think that does anything but shoot us in the foot. That's exactly how the hell we got here to begin with. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 From I Love Kai K. Britt on Twitter, mm-hmm. what does Impact Strategies, a political advocacy firm owned by you, do exactly? Can you go into the specifics on maybe what a day-to-day operations of the firm looks like? Yeah, so day-to-day is different. Mm -hmm. Every single day is different. We represent the interests of clients, some tech companies. Um, We represent a social equity company. We work hard on diversity and inclusion issues. We work on issues around financial inclusion. We work hard on things that we value. On, on things that we support, on things that we know are make the difference for the communities from which we come. And so that is the work we do. It is a blessing and an honor to get paid to advance the causes of, you know, the people who we come from. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll never forget Congressman Thompson telling me, um, aren't you glad you get uh, paid to help black people? And I was like, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a good way to say that. And I think for me, in a space where so often we're ignored and treated as invisible and voiceless, it's dope to be getting paid to advance our causes in spaces where some people ignore them. That's mm-hmm. Good. So now that we know a little bit about impact strategies, Azelle upgrade on Instagram. She wants to upgrade. know. Uh, let me upgrade yeah. you, right? Let me upgrade. Mm-hmm. But Azelle wants to know, how do you balance the whole glamorous girl persona with your intellectual persona? And the reason why she wants to know is because she's asking for her daughters um, that get so much attention for the way they look, but not recognized. Um, for much more than that, which she believes is important as well. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. What's her name again? Azelle Upgrade. Azelle. Um, well, Azelle Upgrade, um, I think that I don't know that I'm balancing that well yet. I don't know that I see myself as a glamorous person. I do get glam done for events, um, but you see I'm not glammed up today. Um, now she says you don't have to do much. Yeah, she was like, thank you God pretty. you don't have to do much. So it's her I said, shade. thank God you pretty. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, what would I say? I, w- I would say that... Um, I think, too, though, you're smart and pretty. And it's sometimes, you know, as girls, we're taught to choose, but you don't have to choose. Yeah, thank you, Naja. I think, I think <laughs> what I would say is... Seriously, thank you. I think what I would say is that um, I always lean into... <clears throat> spending more time on what I know than on appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, I get frustrated when people are like, oh, well, of course you got that look at you or stuff like that. That's irritating to me because I work really hard for what I have. It's important to me that I'm building on a legacy that was laid out by my parents and all mm-hmm. of that. So 
I hear her. I think the main thing is they just need to be confident and clear about who they are and mm-hmm. what they want to contribute to the world. And if they're concerned about that at all, and if they lean into that calling at all, they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And the look stuff will follow. You know, that's what I would say. Next okay. question. This is from Robert I Am on Instagram. Maybe Robert I Am. <laughs> Rimbert. Rimbert. Oh, Rim Rimbert. Okay. Rimbert. This yeah. is the this is the hot question that this everybody is the wants hottest to know. Question. I think this got, got the all most likes. The likes. No, it didn't. Yes, yes it, it did. did. How many what, how many likes? What is the question? Three hundred and eighty likes. Oh, three hundred and eighty likes. And the question is what? <laughs> what happened with you in common? Just love to see black love. I love to see black love too. Um of course we're answering this. So um, what I would say happened is we broke up. Um, we were together for about a year this time. Um, and we broke up, I think it was September-ish maybe, um, because we just want different things. Um, this was right after a time when I realized that I was going to take the second godson, the nine-year-old, more often I had told him about it the day before and um, we had been talking, you know, probably for two months about let's see where things go because I'm leaning towards I want kids and he was leaning towards I don't know. I think when somebody tells you they don't know, they really don't want that. They Mm -hmm. just don't want to hurt you. Um, And so for me, I was like, well, I'm clear. I'm getting clarity around what I want for myself. Although I will tell you there are times regularly (laughs) with the boys where I'm like, I'm good. I don't want kids. Um, I love you guys, Javon and Ryan, but you guys know you're a lot. I know I'm a lot, too. Um, and Niasha. Um, don't forget Poots. Don't forget bonus baby Poots. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the thing that I would say is, you know, he is more established in his career. And, you know, we're a little bit we have a little bit of an age difference. And, and he has a fully grown, wonderful human daughter. I love Amoye so much um, in law school. So not wanting to start over is a thing. you like, no. I'm good. And so I remember us having this conversation the day after we talked about Ryan and he said, you know, I I don't know if I want to have kids. And I said, well, I don't know what else there is to talk about. Right. So I think it was an amicable parting of ways, um, but very clear about the fact that um, we we were not aligned in, in those interests. And I think we'll always be friends. He's a really good person. Um, I'm kind of glad you asked this because <laughs> there are so many stories about what happened this time and last time and um, being someone who um, received death threats last time and part of this time just because we were dating is like ridiculous and like who are you and like don't you have a Trump uh, bot to troll or something like mm-hmm. like why um, so I really I wish uh, Rashid the very best Um but it was time for us to do something very different. And so um, it's I've learned a lot from him. It was um, a great relationship, a great relationship journey, as my holistic therapist would say. And I think really positioned me um, to be in an open, more receptive space for love and what I want and what I require out of my relationships for the person I'm dating now. Mm-hmm. So that's very good. That was beautiful. That was good, yeah. Yeah, I almost cried. I, you did? I mean, I don't know like about Like Jesus. I ain't, I ain't no, you just love talking about Jesus' web today. I just wonder, <laughs> Bishop, if there's another scripture down in your spirit. I guess not. Uh, <laughs> I walk, I shall. But that segue right up into what Terrence Robinson on oh, Facebook Lord. wanted to know. This, Terrence what did, Robinson. What did Terrence say? He said, if you could give yourself from a decade ago one piece of advice what would it be and why? Oh, I thought he was going to be like, who you dating? No. Oh, well, no. the people might want to know that, the too. The people will have to ask. Give the people ask, what they want. <laughs> they have to ask on a, a next An- Ask Angela podcast. I'll just say this. If they pay close attention, they'll see. Um, well, they can find out in 2029 okay. on <laughs> the I next year. 2029? Re- the next year in review. It's 20, 2019. I need some tea 20, to 2029. Right you gotta, they got to wait 10 years. you talking about the years. next decade? Yeah, they got to wait 10 no, years. No, by then the I hope I'm be. married with children in 2029. That's a long time. Put that time. in there. Put, put that there. for 2020. Affirmation. For 2020. <laughs> um, no, what did you ask me again? I need some tea. If you could give yourself you from a decade ago <laughs> one piece of advice, oh. what would it be from a decade ago? Um, Your timeline isn't always... What happened? Oh, nothing. The t- your timeline <laughs> isn't always um, th- your expected timeline. Your projected timeline isn't always the way the journey occurs, mm-hmm. and it's okay. And it's okay if you open yourself up to um, the fact that 
there are some amazing, like beautiful things that are supposed to happen for you, but you might not know what they are or how they'll come. That is going to be the best way for you to move because you're um, not attached to certain outcomes. It doesn't have to be this person. It doesn't have to be that shoe. It doesn't have to be that house. It doesn't have to be. How old was I in 20, 2009? I was already out of school. But it doesn't have to be that school for the younger people among us. Um, it doesn't have to be that job, right? Like, it, it will be whatever you will allow it to be and create the spaciousness that exists for you to receive all of the good stuff that God has for you. Mm. I, I, I love that. Um, sorry to Terrence because I'm about to top on top of this question. But I think you said a lot for us. <laughs> For the uh, Sorry, like millennials, me. because I know that at a certain age, I feel like I'm your age a decade ago. Um, <laughs> almost. Not quite. I'm giving myself a little bit of... Um, what is happening over sorry, here with sorry. this math, this but word problem? It, <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is, too, because what you said was really good, because as millennials, I feel like we watch people like you, and we think we're supposed to have it now, mm-hmm. and we don't always get to see like the journey that you went through. Mm-hmm. We get to see a little bit more now because of Instagram um, and Facebook, but we don't always get to see the journey that you got to to lead mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So for ten years ago, I'm thinking that I should be in your spot, and it's like, no, you're. What about what this person had to go to before mm-hmm. me to get ready for that spot? Right. Um, and I think speaking of spots, like that's also. Um, a place where we really trick ourselves. Mm-hmm. There's not a spot that is um, like transferable to you from me. It mm-hmm. is your own spot. Mm-hmm. It is your own lane. It is as unique as your DNA imprinted. Mm-hmm. Is it is as your DNA code? It is as unique as your parents bringing you into this world with the name you have mm-hmm. and your social security number. It is unique. <laughs> that is your lane. You know what I mean? And there, there is not a space for you to stand in my same lane, going down my same road, traveling my same journey. It's just going to be different. That doesn't mean you can't learn from me. It doesn't mean I can't learn from you, but it does mean that it, the ways in which we get there, the ways in which we navigate, the 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 stops that we have to take, the the proceed with cautions we have to take, the hills we go up, the valleys we have to go through, all of that's different. What I will tell you, no matter what, is it all requires work. Mm. Mm. And the bottom line is, like, I have not arrived. I don't know if when I'm on my deathbed, I will have feel like will have felt like I arrived and I accomplished everything I believe I was supposed to accomplish. What I know is. It takes hard work. I'm friends with very successful people, and they are all always working, like always working. And that doesn't mean that they don't engage in self-care. It doesn't mean that they don't take care of themselves, although I question some of them regularly who shall not be named, whether or not they're taking care of themselves as much as they should and if they're getting as much rest as they should. But, like, absolutely, it takes a lot of work. And arriving something looking good on the gram doesn't mean that that thing looks good every single day and night every day of the week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just so I went on a whole tangent. But oh, that's that was a, thing. a word. That was. Thank you, my, Terrence. My, my. Thank you, mm-hmm. Terrence and Byron, who added on to his right. question. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to just okay. I had one job. <laughs> you did good. Several, actually. <laughs> he does have several jobs. From Black and Proud 80 on Twitter, mm-hmm. have you ever been called the N-word by another race? And Ooh. if so, how did you respond? Oh, yes. Um... I remember when I was, um, I don't remember what grade we were in. Zara Taha can attest to this story. Mm. But we were we used to race. We used to race. We were a part of the National Brotherhood of Skiers. We were downhill ski racers um, as young people. And I remember we were in um, Washington State. Where did we used to go skiing? In Snoqualmie Pass. But there was a certain mountain we always went to. I cannot think of it. We were on a lift chair. There was a group of white girls in front of us. It was three of us um, behind them. I cannot think of who was with me and Zara. But this girl must have said, nigger bitch. I will never forget it. And I just felt like I could leap out of that lift chair and snatch her by a full ski off of her seat. It was the craziest thing. And I was like, what? So we were behind them in the lift chair. And we like flew, like try to like race after them down the hill. I still to this day don't know how they escaped us because as I said, we used to race, <laughs> but they did. And thank God almighty, cause I don't know what would have happened. How old were you? I feel like I was in the eighth grade. Ooh. I was in the eighth or ninth God. grade. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah. And it was, cr- it was like, what is the point of that? Or they might, they made us a nigger bitches because it was either way yeah it was it was too much but i remember us being like oh my god are y'all crazy yeah 
That's um, so we were like talking, sh- like you know, like normal kids. But it was like, what are you doing? That's like a bridge too far. And mm-hmm. where did you learn that from? Yeah. yeah. In eighth grade. Yeah. Mm. Well, all parts of Washington aren't liberal, mm. right? So anyway, hot mess. Well, Ugh. on top of that, Phenom 8800, mm-hmm. they said, has anyone ever told you that they or others are scared as hell when they find out they'll be debating you on TV? Mm, if they did, I've never been told that. No, I've never been told that. I um, I do think I'm a formidable dating, I mean de- dating, formidable debating mm-hmm. partner, um, sparring partner, but I don't think that anybody's ever been to- ever told me that they were intimidated I think that it showed up in how they responded to me um I've been told on air um you know let me help you you can't do math um I've been told on air like let me help you I actually have experience here where I've had to be like yeah bro me too Mm -hmm. um I've been I've been told a lot of or talked over you know ways where you're like I'm actually not at the period I'm still getting to my point and you can wait to make yours um, I think it shows up in that way. I think when people are the most insecure um, or intimidated, they do things that are undermining of another person. Um, when a loving response is to just give people the respect they deserve and require as as fellow humans. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the next question, too, because it's a little bit about um, voter suppression and fighting. You wasn't so ready anyway. I was. what, oh, sorry. Well, what can the average <laughs> citizen do to fight voter suppression? Um, pay attention to where it's happening. Where's the latest legislation? How is it showing up? Voter suppression has morphed since, um, frankly, 2010 when some of the first measures were voted on after folks were scared of Barack Obama, right? So it used to be, you know, voter ID. You need an ID to vote. Um, we're going to decrease the amount of um, folks who are returning citizens from exercising their right to vote by making it harder. We were going to consider these bills. We're not now. Cutting down... Um, absentee voting opportunities, cutting down early voting days. Now it is truly about a um, coordination, a gross coordination and irresponsible coordination with like Russia, mm-hmm. like foreign governments and the ways in which they have now seen. I think they hacked into more than uh, 32 states. I think it's 32 states in 2016 into their election processes. So if they can, they realize it's hackable. We're not w- willing to spend money because Mitch McConnell won't consider all these um election security measures that have been passed by the House and sent over to the Senate, they they know that we're vulnerable. Um, and so I think that's the new voter suppression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Purging the rolls. There was just a, a, a road, a, a voter purge uh, issue that came up in, I think it was Wisconsin just the other day. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You done? No. Okay. Um, we're not done. If you could pick five songs as a soundtrack to your life, what would they be? Oh From Craig God. Davis on Facebook. Hey, mm. Craig. Hey, Craig. <laughs> you ain't got to lie, hey, Craig. <laughs> um, I would say, um, dang, I don't know, Craig. That's hard. Um, Young, Gifted, and Black, Donny Hathaway version. Mm. Um, right here, SWV, because I'm the fourth member. Um... I need a gospel song. What's a good gospel song? Order my steps. Amen. Mm. Please, uh, please order my steps. Um, you got two more. Man, that's hard. I need a whole soundtrack. Um, you know what he should do? I have an op- a Apple um, list that uh, that's old that came out. That was like a this Queen's year. thing. It was oh, this year. Yeah, you have the Queen's one, but you did one. This year too. Oh well, that's one, and then I think we're doing. Well, that's spot. It's a Spotify window. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to do a Christmas list one. Anyway, I'm not doing this because I have too many songs. But the point is, there are <laughs> artists that have made the difference. J Cole and Kendrick are my new rappers. Tupac, Snoop. I knew the whole Snoop album. I can't put that on the soundtrack of my life, but I know all the words. <laughs> um, what else is there? There's so much. Mm-hmm. It's probably a Beyonce song. There's a. I don't know. I don't think people know how much you love music. Though. Oh, I love music. I I can tie every like moment in my life to a song. We mm. used to perform. We performed "Down My Heart." The boys' uh, song. I mean, a whole dance routine for Christmas. We performed Janet Jackson. Uh, was it "Pleasure Principle" where she tipped the chair down or "Control"? One of them. I mean, it's a real. It's really a thing. I used to write songs. They weren't that good, but I wrote. <laughs> 
I'm serious. Bring that back. Mm -hmm. Bring that back. (laughs) Those books are gone. I think my mama threw them away. She's like, this ain't that good. I'm going to throw that away. Too Good To Be True 86 on Mm -hmm. Instagram asked, I see you hashtagging right road to the pole. What does that mean? Polls. Polls. Did she say poll? Polls. I can't read. Right road to the polls is just a way of us, of taking the opportunity to engage people around voting um, this year, around uh, political education before voting, because that's most important around political engagement and activism before voting, making sure that you're educated every step of the way. On this podcast, we have interviewed several presidential candidates. We will continue doing that going into the primary season. Um, it's really just a way to ensure that you know um, what these candidates stand for, what policies are um, passing in your local area at the federal level so that you can be more intentional about how you cast your ballot. It is a very powerful, powerful tool, but it's not the only tool you have at your disposal disposal for political activism. Anything else? Are we good? We got two more, more questions. Time. Okay. Let's so make this second last one you got left. Okay. Does jeopardy does double jeopardy apply to a former president who has been impeached by the Congress but not convicted by the Senate? Can that president, once out of office, still be in, indicted for crimes committed while in office, and he is, and he is out of the range of a presidential pardon? From Jofra Twelve. On Instagram. Joe for 12, I had to look up um, the ways in which this plays out. Um, And one of the things I found is that in August 2000, um, the Department of Justice, through the Office of the Attorney General, issued a legal opinion um, that stated the following. We conclude that the Constitution permits a former president uh, to be criminally prosecuted for the same offenses for which he was impeached by the House and acquitted by the Senate while in office. That means that it is permissible um, because someone can be impeached. And again, that trial in the Senate doesn't necessarily mean removal. Um, So if the president is removed from office by some miracle um, on Senate Street, then um, he wouldn't, I don't think he would be able to be prosecuted again. You know, this is a different day and age though because this Department of Justice has argued um, that uh, the president didn't commit any wrongdoing and that he shouldn't be held liable for it while he's in office. So this is just a different day and age. But in 2000, that was permissible. And last question from Sandra Lopez underscore CBUS on Instagram asks, what are your favorite books of 2019? Well, I had to write these down, too. I wasn't ready for the uh, song when I didn't know, but let me see. My books list, I can tell you for sure. The first one is um, Becoming. Michelle Obama wrote this in 2018, but I read it in 2019. Becoming is just the truth. Like, it shows you all the reasons why we call her our forever first lady. There's another book that is old, like older than that, but my um, a good. she's becoming a good friend of mine, um, Angela Nisso. Um, suggests that I read Bird by Bird as I write my book. Um, and her name, the, the author's name is Anne Lamott. It is incredible. It is not just an incredible book about writing, but it's also just an incredible book to get you to um, break up the things that are happening in your life into more digestible bits. Bird by Bird is incredible. Um, there's also a book called How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi that is incredible. And then uh, I would also say Finding My Voice by Valerie Jarrett. Um, I got to sit down with her for a book talk earlier this year um, that was just really, really good. And my fifth book, especially because I left them off. Um, I, this is definitely four books and not five. I would say um, the Bible is some good stories in there. And I just was telling my godson, Javon, about this when he was preparing for an assignment about dreams in the Bible and what they mean, how God communicates to us through through dreams um super good and then i also just want to shout out my friends and fellow political commentators who have books that'll be coming out near the beginning of this year that is um tiffany cross bakari sellers and simone sanders kudos y'all just now joining you on the journey and it's hard so i'm just proud of everything you're doing um and can't wait to support you all in the books that you've written. Oh, and Cleo Wade. Shout out to Cleo Wade. Um, I can't think of the name of her book right now. Um, but she was incredible. We got to sit down and have a book talk. So, Cleo, I'm thinking of you. Are you okay with the Are You Okay booth? Her latest book um, is also really good. I didn't read the whole thing, but I know, like, everything through her Instagram post, through what I have read of the book, 
Um, through what I know about her, she's just an incredible gem to the world. That's all. You found the name of the book? No? Okay. We'll we'll make sure we post that later. You remember? No? I can tell you. What what a means to end or something? No, that's definitely not it. It's probably on her page. It is. Um, Let me pull this. I thought that's what you were doing. I was. And then I, it's where to begin. Oh. Where to begin? A small Where book to begin? About your That's power. it. That's it. Yeah. So shout out to Cleo Wade and the baby would soon come. All right. Thank you. Happy 2019, you. y'all. More to come. Hit 2020. The wall. Hit the Happy wall. Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. What happened? Hit the wall. No. <laughs> I'm okay with that. No. I, I I hit the. This whole podcast was the wall. Amen, church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you so much. Alright, that was wrong. For all my children of the light, born in the sinning, but steady striving to do right. My people are warriors. All we know is to fight. Praying, they see God in everything I write here. Yeah.